Warning, this game contains content that might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewers discretion is advised. Hello everyone and welcome to Rotten Dinner. They finally have a full release with 10 different endings and hopefully we can get through all of them today, including the secret ending. So hey, let's get right into it, shall we? Ugh. Please stop it. I know perfectly well it's time to get up. I even go to bed. Ugh. I don't feel so good. Maybe I should stay at home. Much better. Couldn't sleep at all last night again. It was like someone was scratching my window. From fear, everything flew out of my head. Who are you today, huh? Lion. Yeah, I remember now. You ruined my life, Lion! Screw you! It's Tuesday, right? Ever since school, I remember this day as somehow drearily dull. Yeah. Another reason to stay home, but if I skip classes again, my head will be torn off. You rubbed your eyes and got out of bed, muttering unhappily because of the cold floor on which you stood barefoot. This week promises to be boring, even more ordinary than usual. You start thinking about everything that could happen today, and accidentally get lost in those thoughts. Finally, you manage to return to reality and remember that you used to start the morning with a selection of colorful accessories that seemed cool to you. But at university, stop wearing them. I think it was too childish. Huh. Maybe I should remember the old days. It was quite fun. I haven't had much left since then. Still, maybe I should wear this pendant today. Oh, I used to love this weird knickknack, so... Yeah! Apparently, this would actually affect the ending. I'm probably gonna... I'm gonna put it on for now. I'm gonna put on a weird p necklace for now. Awesome. Now I'm definitely a freak. But I wear this thing. I'm incredibly lucky in stupid situations. Something like an amulet of failure. The most hit. Um, not some kind of sectarian, honestly. Why did I pour my blood here at all? A cup of bitter coffee has already cooled down when you fully packed up and came to drink it. This cheap coffee is really invigorating, but so disgusting. When I got a job, I'll buy myself a can of normal coffee. No, two cans. I have to spoil myself. The road to the university in the morning was so terrible, but in the evening you had to look around. You keep a knife in your pocket. This district is really shitty. And now, finally, you have come to your institute, the place where you became convinced that some people are rare scum. Back in high school, you realized that life isn't sugar and it's not a teen show at all. That's why there's no groups of cool kids or school queens surrounded by personal maids. Everyone here is the same. Tired guys who want to get a college education. While it's probably not like that, like everywhere. You're just lucky. <sighs> Don't start the morning so pessimistic. Still, some are different though. But they really can't be envied. For our souls become punching bags from day one. Why? Because though. So. Because the strong ones can do it to them. Don't ask unnecessary questions and don't stand out. That's what life has taught you so far. Huh? What happened? You were trying to squeeze through the crowd. Someone being beaten again. This is such a frequent occurrence that everyone had forgotten about it and passed by, but... You keep looking. Every time. You know how many of the students of this university love the sight and smell of blood. You came closer to see what's happening. And swear that you've not joined this indifferent herd. No, you will definitely help, but you'll see first. Ah, should have known. Hi, Nick! You didn't greet him seriously. Most likely, he hardly heard you at all. Nick is the main victim of the sinister place. His leg was broken on the first day, and in the second, the contents of a trash can were poured on his head. And then, you didn't remember much else. Just think of any stereotypical bullying in high school and multiply that by two. That's what this guy has experienced. Why are they bullying him? No one knows and no one dares to try to find out. Everyone ignores and avoids him. Feared to fall under the hot hand of the main scumbags in the university. And you're one of those people. Weak, pathetic, insignificant. You can't even help yourself, let alone, let alone him. Maybe. Am I gonna do something I'll regret all my life? Eh, it should be interesting. Uh, yeah, I'll help him. I'm tired of this. Someone has to sacrifice their butt and stand up for this poor thing. Hey! Stop it! Oh, just leave him alone. The guy's already bleeding. 
for second day in a row, and it's just Tuesday. You want to make fun of someone, then choose not the weakest of all. I mean, heck, it'll be funnier if you, like, make the big guy cry. Everyone looked at you in horror. Someone from behind started laughing and whispering something like, Damn, dude, did you hear that? I was going to leave here in an ambulance right now. You sure about that? I can take him. You serious? I will laugh, but this act is so stupid, it's not even funny. Leave while you can, freak. Can't you see we're having fun? Do you want to join in? Yeah, but yeah, I don't think that you're going to be as resilient as that jerk. You're not kidding. You know it. Some strange shivers sent through your body. It seems like it was your masochistic tendencies. Oh, oh, God. You grabbed the bloody guy by the arm and pulled him out of the police admits. Despite his wounds, he ran fast. You ran like two rabbits being chased by hunters. Fear was running through your fingertips. There was no time to think about your stupidest act. Now you had to get out of here as fast as possible. The corridors and stairs seemed endlessly long, as if there was no way out of this terrible place. I'll catch up with you and rip your head off! You finally managed to quickly turn the corner and disappear from the side of the thugs. You didn't even look around the room you were in because you fell to the floor and tried to catch your breath after all that running. The fact that you're still alive is a miracle. Now you have time to think about your idiotic act. For what? Why'd I save him? It's not like we're friends. I just know his name because he's in my social circle. I often like to mention stuff about what happens to this guy. I don't even know what he looked like, but I guess... Hey, thank you. The guy squatted down in front of you, his bangs completely covering his eyes. You could only see a neat smile, blood smeared all over his face, also staining his white shirt. Oh, so that's what you look like. You saved me without even knowing what, who I am? The situation has become a thousand times nicer. Nick laughed very sweetly. His cheeks turned a little pink. Yeah, it was really... It was nice of me. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, you didn't do anything to them. Why would they do that to you? It annoys me just to think about it. I uh, know. Maybe I'm just too pathetic. Anyway, let them do what they want. Well, they literally beat you to a pulp. You want to die or something? I would have chosen a quicker and less painful way. Nick laughed quietly again. I had to check something. Don't worry. As soon as I'm done, it'll stop. What do you want to know? The limits of the human body or how quickly they'll kill you? What? Don't worry. I'll be fine. I promise. That's exactly what I said. Okay, there's nothing I can do to interfere with your, uh, experiments. And it's none of my business, to be honest. His whole image seems to look def so defenseless that he can't help but feel pity for this guy. Even though he obviously doesn't need it. To be honest, I don't feel any pain, but the humiliation hurts me a little. Huh? Are you analgesic? Yeah, I don't feel anything. Almost, but honestly. That disease only took away my sensitivity. I can still smell things. Like the beautiful smell of flowers? Lad. Uh, okay. Kinda smells cool. Probably. I tried to pick up some more words, but this conversation seemed to have reached a dead end. What was that? Mumbling something unintelligible and quiet again. Can't make out a single word. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm... Um, I'm just gonna go. I still have to save my butt from those guys who absolutely hate me now. It wouldn't have happened if I hadn't saved you. Oh, no, it's not that I regret doing it. I just don't understand why I did it. God, I better shut up. I'm sorry for setting you up. And don't worry. I just thank you for saving me. You know, you're so cute and charming, Lion. No one has ever said such warm words to me. You're flattering me. <laughs> it was definitely not your fault. Wait, you know me? I've never crossed paths in our lives. Literally never because I'm studying in a different building. Yeah, <laughs> said too much again. What is wrong with your face? Where is your face? Where is your face? Nick! I'm so sorry. I got a little... Overexcited. Did you drop your face? Nick? Better? Much better. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a crazy day. I'm glad Nick is alive and doesn't look like he just got beaten up by three huge guys. 
I wonder why he thanked me and just left. He turned out to be shyer than I thought. Yeah, I don't blame him. After all, he has been bullied for so long. The lectures came to an end. You managed to survive and your body was not yet sick by the end of the day. But right now, the anxiety was almost knocking you off your feet. These streets have always frightened you. But right now, every step you took seemed full of danger. Every rustle made you jump with fear. Am I that bored of my life? Why did I ever get into this? And now I'm shaking a hundred times more. Maybe I wanted to be intimidated. Yeah, I should change the lock on my door again. We've come to a bend. Still a long way to your house, and that part of the road has always scared you. You constantly feel like you can hear someone following you. But right now, there was a rustling of clothes. Maybe it's just your imagination that's running wild because of the adrenaline rush. So you want to get out of here as soon as possible. Maybe I should turn around quietly and try to get out of here. If I don't hurry, they might attack from behind. Hee <laughs> hee. If there's anyone there at all, why am I making myself panic? Uh, quietly turn around and go the other way. Run home as soon as possible. Quietly turn around and go the other way. Screw it. I'll just carefully take another road. You try to speed up your step as much as possible while remaining completely silent. Food voices rang out from dark alley. A shiver ran through you. Thank you heaven for not going in that direction. The new road took twice as long, but it was all lit up by street lamps. You never saw any suspicious people on your way. Yeah, the entrance way. I miss you already. The living room is dirty and smelly, but once you're here, you're more relaxed. You pour yourself a coffee and get some yogurt out of the fridge. It's a combination you don't like very much, but it has been your daily diet for quite some time. <sighs> Yeah, I'll be sure to look for our openings tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to bed. Tomorrow's gonna be a hard day. You fall immediately onto the soft mattress and your eyelids are heavy. Today's emotions have squeezed all the strength out of you. You rarely think about tomorrow. It's too hard. There's almost no one in your life and no one to hold on to. So do you have any sense or incentive to live? <laughs> Seems that my annoying daily routine and desire to help at least someone has prompted me to do an idiotic thing. In general, maybe it wasn't stupid. Maybe he'll fight back, thanks to me. He smiled warmly. you would like to believe that. He you closed your eyes and thought about what awaits you tomorrow. Well, you'll get through it. Life's not all sugar. You'll have to be able to cope with challenges. Good night, my daily loneliness. Hi. Good night. Fun. We have Nick in our room. I would presume it's Nick. It'll be really funny if it was one of the bullies, actually. Anyway, I'm gonna see what happens if we run home as soon as possible. Screw it. I'm going home. You run as fast as you can, so you don't stop for a second near the dark alley. Ugh, I actually can't run that fast. Damn, Lionel's running away! These words echo in your head. So it wasn't paranoia. You're really being waited on. And they catch up with you. It was a taste of blood in your mouth. Your lungs are on fire. No, no, no! No, 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 no. Everything around you no longer had outlines. Only darkness and someone's inarticulate curses somewhere high above your defenseless body on the wet sidewalk. You feel someone roughly flipping you onto your back. It's no blows, but you can already smell blood. Is that your nose bleeding? Is it a head wound? Is it bleeding from your ears? No, my necklace. You feel like you can feel splinters digging into your neck. The rotten blood from the necklace has stained you, and fresh blood has been added to it, oozing out of small but deep wounds. Oh my god, I can see a thing. I can already feel the pain coming on. A wave of hot, throbbing pain slowly ran through your body. It felt like someone had stabbed you. Not deep, but obviously painful. You heard disgusted laughter, and felt one of them roughly grab you by the hair. Please, let me go. Please! You whispered so softly that hardly anyone could hear you. There was an upstairs commotion, as if the guys were arguing. The tears began to flow. You squeezed your eyes shut. The screams got louder and louder, then suddenly stopped. The silence was cut by the disgusting sound of a knife rapidly entering someone's body. But you didn't feel any pain. You heard someone fall right in front of you. Smell of fresh blood hit your nose. You know very well how disgusting knife wounds smell. Now it stinks all over the place. But it wasn't just blood. It was 
death. He remembered perfectly well the smell of dead bodies from the morgues. Wait, why would you be in the morgue? Why would you ever go to the morgue? Only after the next sound of the knife, sharply severing the flesh, you realize that there is only one living person near you. And two corpses. Your breathing hitched. No matter how hard you tried to pretend you fainted, you failed. The killer of the two thugs did not leave their bodies alone, relentlessly thrusting his blade into the guys who were already definitely dead. He seemed to enjoy it. And honestly, you're not as scared to hear a person ripping their belly open. As you are to hear that they they've stopped. In the silence, there was a rustling of clothes next to you, echoing in your head. Someone grabbed your shoulder and started to lift you up. There was no strength to scream. You began to feel like you were losing consciousness, but the hope of survival made you perk up. Gather your strength to run away? Yeah, sure. I don't want to die in an alley in the clutches of serial killer. The icy hands at your shoulders squeezed you tightly. The clasping your eyes, you hit someone's face upwards at random. The man sighed heavily to let you go without waiting a second. You run away from there as fast as you can. All your senses were switched off. You were ruled only by the desire to survive. You ran. You ran. You ran. And ran. And ran. And ran! You quickly jump around some corner because you feel like you're about to faint. You need to catch your breath. You won't be able to escape. You breathe as quickly as you can, but the sounds echoed in your head, drowning out by the ringing in your ears. It feels like you're screaming instead of trying to catch your breath. The step seems to be gone. Perhaps a maniac who was chasing you and ran ahead without noticing that you were hiding. You slowly slide down the wet brick wall, wiping your face, neck, and collarbones with your sleeves. It was soaked with blood, which was still flowing from the small wounds. Yeah, so far I don't feel any pain. In the hospital, it'd be painful to pull out these tiny shards of glass. Ah. Uh, for a while, you sit quietly in your hiding place. Silence was frightening and reassuring at the same time. The fear that right now the maniac realized that they were not chasing anyone else and had already turned around to find you made your heart beat again with a terrible speed. You slowly walk out without making a sound. They walk out onto the unlit road. It's cold in here. Very cold. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Who stabbed me? Ah! Oh! Oh god! Ah! Uh, where did you stab me? So dumb. A hot throbbing pain pierced your stomach. Oh! Oh, that's where my, all my num noms go! Why would you stab me there? Such a stupid death, lion. Oh! Death and blind. Alright, let's head off to the next route. Okay, so I think I know better than to help him. I'm just gonna forget about it. Like, I saw nothing today. Yeah, I'm sorry, little one. I still value my life. I have three more years to study here. I don't want to turn them into my personal hell. You felt a prick of conscience, but only for a second. After all, you annoyed bullying this guy for years, so what now? Will you become a hero? Will you become the protector of the weak? You're not gonna lie to yourself. It's stupid and pointless. None of your friends are here today. These idiots are sick or rather drunk and hangover. You don't really like alcohol, even though your whole life is leading you down a path of alcohol or addiction. By happy coincidence, you became neither. Even though everyone who's been to your house, the first thing they ask you is, you getting high? You only, you only smile crookedly at, at this. Ah, <sighs> finally, a bell. You take a seat at the back desk. It's cozy. Honestly, you love lessons, but you can't stand exams. When exam time came, all the knowledge instantly left your head. No thoughts, head empty. And during the test, you received a satisfactory grade, only thanks to your natural restraint, innate charms and entreaties. If there were any of these knuckleheads here, it would be more fun. The whispering, the sound of a pencil sliding across paper, someone's quiet laughter all put you to sleep. Ugh, so tired. Why? Somehow he found it easier to sleep here than at home. There, you were constantly haunted by strange sounds and a feeling as if someone was watching you. So peaceful here. Want to get some sleep? As soon as you close your eyes, you begin to hear the sounds of slowly dripping water. 
Don't feel a sweatshirt getting wet, so whatever. You start scoring me in your chair. Something happens. Something unpleasant. Nothing hurts, and no one is touching you. But you definitely feel uncomfortable. It's like someone's staring at you. You cover your face with your sleeve. The freaking noise of the drops gets louder and louder. And louder. And louder. And louder. And louder. And louder. How much louder is it gonna get? Ah, damn it. You jumped up from your seat. Everyone starts staring at you. It was disgustingly awkward. Lion, your nose is bleeding. Go to the nurse. You touch your face. Your fingers are covered in blood. How did you not notice that? It's bleeding nonstop. Your nose is aching too. Sorry. You walk down the long hallway to the nurse's office and look under your feet. Truth be told, you only had to wash your face with cold water. But her office smells really cool. The smell has become pretty native to you. Suddenly you feel like you're bumping into someone. The collision was violent, but someone ahead of you seems to have dropped books from their hands. Oh, sorry. You don't even have time to reach out your bloody helping hand before the person in front of you has already picked up the fallen textbooks and jumped up on both feet. Don't worry. People rarely apologize to me. Yeah, so I forgive you. Hi, Nick. Ah, shoot. Uh, talk to him a little bit. Your cheeks seem to be getting a little redder. You felt a pang of conscience. Yeah, Nick. Hi. You know my name? Nick didn't look upset or angry. Ah, no, I'm sorry about this morning. Even so, the guilt never left you, especially after look at his bloody shirt. Is it morning? What was this morning? Uh, you actually got screwed up by two guys. The blood's not even dry yet. How could you forget? Yeah, yeah. Wait, am I Nick? I'm sorry, I wonder if that's the case. Like, huh. We'll find out in the secret ending, I suppose. Sorry, no, it looks creepy. It's just that this morning's beating has become so usual. It was really creepy, but you won't say it out loud. It's a pity you can't fight back, but you shouldn't have to suffer that kind of... You shouldn't have to suffer that kind of bull. Those morons. It really pissed me off. Sorry again. Were you one of the ones who beat me too? Uh, no. And you have nothing to apologize for. Moreover, it seems like this morning ritual has become something like a lover's kiss when they meet. They seem to like me. Why else would they be so attached to me? Maybe someday they will turn from anger to love. Who knows? No, not the enemy is a lover's trope, even though I love that trope. You had nothing to say. A few unintelligible words come out of your mouth, like a mixture of wheezing, giggles, and sobbing. I think I overreacted. I have a strange sense of humor. I rarely talk to people, so I say whatever comes to my head. Don't worry about it. I think it's kind of cute. Really? Oh, thank you. It's very comfortable and pleasant to be around you. Ah, thanks. You really turned out to be a good guy. You chuckled and then felt a little dizzy. There's still blood coming out of your nose. Damn it. Get out of here. Sorry to be rude, but why didn't you remind me that I'm bleeding like a freaking bucket? I I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I was drugged. With what? That smell. Yeah, your blood type is AB negative. Am I right? Am I right? You see this guy start literally shaking. Are those drops of sweat on his face? What is going on? Is he getting hormy? I, I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm gonna go. See ya. A strange change of mood has put you into a stupor. What the hell? Has he been talking to you all this time just to smell blood? You can't get your head around it. You walk quickly to the nurse's office. Behind your back, there was giggling and whispering, and it scared you. Thank God you didn't cross paths through Nick the rest of the day. The man never left your mind for a minute. Maybe it was his fetish. Whatever. But how the heck did he know your blood type? Your guess was worse than the last, but he couldn't... He couldn't tell it by the smell, could he? You spent the whole way thinking about it. This time, you didn't even have time for the daily scare of the road. Lying between the university and your home. Finally here. <sighs> Why am I so worried? There are a lot of screw-ups in this world and he looks harmless than most. I'll be studying in different buildings, so I don't think we'll be seeing each other again anytime soon. My room! I'm finally here! Time flew by unnoticed in this place. Ugh. Warm blankets, soft pillow, pile of plush toys. You always want to live separately from your parents, but despite your confidence and your abilities, you had no idea that there were so many difficulties waiting for you. Study, work, taking care of yourself. Doesn't sound very hard, but in practice, 
You have to make some sacrifices. If I can't find the money, I'll soon lose my roof over my head. Fred can't lend me money forever. Sometimes I think about the fact that it was better to take care of your safety in the first place than the price of these cheap apartments. How many crimes have occurred in this area in the last month? About 15? But that really paled in comparison to the freedom you were given. Life is not sugar. You have to repeat that to yourself. Yeah, I wish one of my friends were here. You twist the bloody pendant in your necklace around your fingers. Yeah. Maybe... I may be a little doubtful about my wish right now. I slowly got out of bed and went into the hallway. Who could it be? You don't get visitors very often. You open the flimsy door and a cold sweat breaks out. Hi, Nick! You try to slam it back down with a crumpled whisper. Uh, I'm going to bed! Suddenly, Nick pulls the door towards you, stepping inside. Your feet are shaking. Where did he get so much strength from? Hi there. I came to visit. Nick smiled sweetly. This pretty face didn't reassure you at all. Okay. Yeah, it's actually pretty late, don't you think? And I don't remember inviting you over. That phrase you said in a whisper. Invited. What? I was invited. By you. Is it that why you chatted so nicely with me this morning? Are we friends? You like me? Oh, you're crazy about me. I can see that. I can smell that. It's slow to retreat back to your room. The phone is there. You need to get the damn phone right away. What are you trying to run to? Where are you trying to run to? Screw everything. You jump up and run to your room, slamming the door behind you. you frantically look for your phone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have yelled at you. It's just that you drive me crazy. Really? You heard pitying moans on the other side of the door. His voice sounded so different that you knew it was still him. You really think that this thin piece of crap is gonna hold me back? I'll give you five seconds, then I'll knock it out! And we'll be together forever. You felt vomit coming to your throat. The damn phone was gone. Five? You ran to the window. Remember too late that there were bars. Oh no! Four? The only weapon in your room was a small office knife, which you grabbed and held to your chest with your trembling hands. Three? You hid so that you could jump out at Nick as soon as he walked into your room. Two? The last second, you ripped off your necklace and threw it onto the other corner of the room. One. I'm coming, my love. Suda's door was broken down. You jumped out of cover and hit where Nick's stomach was supposed to be, but... There was no one in front of you. He looked out of the aisle at you. With a jerk, Nick came into the room and grabbed you by the neck, lifted you up off the floor. He laughed, but you couldn't hear it. Are you seriously thinking of killing me with this? Such idiocy, but your lust for life is unbelievably cute. Nick threw you on the bed and immediately sat on top of you, not letting you move. He grabbed the knife and with his other hand, he kept giving it to your neck. Closeness of your blood excites me. Ah, how long I've wanted to do this. Tears spurted from your eyes and a muffled croak came from your throat. This, he's cutting into your stomach. You could feel your tissues tearing and wet, warm organs coming out. You were almost suffocating with pain. It felt like you were in pain with every cell of your body being torn out by a blunt blade. Nick smiled and he let go of your neck. You're going to die anyway, so why keep trying to hold you? He ran his hand inside of your organs, stroking them, pulling them outward, then leaned over and licked them. You saw him leaning over your gutted belly and throwing up. Tears rolled down your cheeks one last time, and then... Only darkness followed. Nick didn't need you alive. He whispered declarations of love to your body, your organs, your blood. Nick gently kissed your still warm neck, gently touching each finger on your hand with his lips and licked the blood. He slid his fingers over your wet, sticky body and whispered how beautiful you are. Oh my god, you're so warm. You love me that much. Yes, I know that you love me. Please, give me this sweet wonderful taste of your insides. You're all freaking mine. I'm dessert. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay, I know better than to talk to him, so I'm gonna quickly say hello and go to the nurse. You hastily say something like, hello, how are you? Uh, yeah, have a good day. With merges into one word, and then you leave. 
Seems like Nick tried to stop you and say something, but you can't hear him anymore. Ugh, silence at last. The only pleasant sound was the quiet noise of the street. Where did you hear from the ajar window? The nurse is absent, as usual. Seems like she spent all her working time at lunch or on a smoke break. But you don't need her presence. You know very well where everything you need is. You tear off a small piece of absorbent cotton and shove it up your nose. It's still bleeding a lot, so it soaked up the blood pretty quickly. Your head is a little dizzy. You sit down on the couch. You're definitely not up for a lecture today. How about lying here for a while? Like, till a nurse comes. I mean, it's definitely till the evening. Maybe not the evening of this day. The surface of the couch is cold, but just a couple of minutes later, it is already warm for me body. Quiet. Nice smelling, peaceful place. You slowly fall asleep. You sleep quite lightly, so you hear the door creaking. Someone came into the office, probably get a band-aid or something. You lie here quite often, so you know from experience that if you disturb someone, they'll just wake you up. There's absolute silence in the office. You seem to be the only one here again. But you feel there's something wrong here. It's like someone's silhouette is in front of you. I open my eyes for a second. Nothing will happen. I'll calm myself down and then just go back to sleep. You hesitate for a while and wonder if it's worth it. Something seems to stop you. Come on. What is that? Sleep instantly leaves your body and a cold sweat breaks out. You couldn't move from the fright. Nick, what are you doing here? You didn't just get the impression this guy sitting in front of you. Uh, he was literally devouring you with his gaze. You wouldn't have cared about such a prank, but there is something bloody in that look. This man certainly wasn't just going to let you go like that. But Nick grinned. You jumped up sharply from your bunk and tried to rush to the door. But you rudely intercepted, dropping to the floor. You felt blood starting to flow from your forehead. You were roughly pressed against the icy tiles on the floor. Nick had his hand over your mouth. His grip was so strong that you couldn't even turn your head sideways. You began to shake and tears came to your eyes. I was so scared to even think about what's going to happen next. You felt your hands tied with a belt. The guy sat down gently on your lower back and you realized that he wasn't trying to crush you with his weight. You closed your eyes, before which there was already darkness, his hands running gently through your hair, over your face, down your neck. It was insanely weird, considering he had just cracked your forehead on the floor. Does it hurt? Sorry. They want you to run away, darling. You start to feel nauseous. What is he talking about? The guy leaned over you and he felt his warm tongue coming against your cheek. Only after a few disgusted licks did you realize that he wasn't playing with you this way. It was licking your blood. Nick's hand continued to gently touch your body, stroke your back, your arms, your legs, but he went no further. His long hair tickled your face, but you weren't laughing at all. Nick picked up the blood dripping on the floor with his tongue one last time. Then he gently kissed you on the cheek. After that, he suddenly pulled away from you. You started praying to heaven that he would just go away, but then there was a metallic clang behind you. Sorry, this is going to hurt. I'll kiss the place where it hurts, okay? Please be patient, sweetheart. You won't feel a thing soon. It feels like your voice is gone. You don't understand what's going on. Could this be a joke? No. No, he can't just kill you. There are footsteps near you. He seems to have sat on his knees next to you. Nick strokes your face. You feel his hot breath very close to your lips. Ow! You hear the scalpel pierce your body and the moment the guy covers your mouth with his hand instead of screams, a mooing comes out of your throat, but not for long. The blade runs roughly down your throat. The unbearable hot pain and the approaching death makes you no longer feel that Nick has kept his promise, kissing your slit neck. This guy takes your breathless body and braces it for a while, enjoying its last warmth and streams of flowing blood. Nick licks the blood that hasn't clotted yet, bites your skin and even tears off a piece of your neck as he does so, and gently strokes your back as if to soothe you. After a while, Nick gently sets your frozen body aside. The guy took a cigarette out of his short pockets. He left bloody fingerprints on the pack and the lighter. Nick took a slow drag and was quiet outside the door. No one guessed that someone had just committed murder in the name of his sincere love. Ugh. It's getting colder in here. Don't you feel it, too, my dear? Chill dinner. Well, 
Let's hit him back. Okay, this time I'm just not gonna wear the necklace. Uh, see how different the routes are from here? I'm not in the mood today. I'm really old enough for such trinkets. I hope something interesting happens today. You put the necklace back on the table. Take one last look around the room and leave. A cup of bitter coffee has already cooled down while you fully packed up. Came to drink it. This cheap coffee is really invigorating, but it's disgusting. I got a job of buying myself a can of normal coffee. No, two cans. I've spoiled myself. Pretty sure I've been through all this dialogue, so let's skip ahead to something that's different. So apparently, choosing not to pick up the necklace will result in you uh, not having the decision to help Nick or not. So it just skips through the entire interaction. And instead, like, we are brought to a new line of dialogue here. The faces of already tired and sleep deprived students split around, make your head spin, and you lean back against the wall, where you watch their endlessly bleak faces from under your covered eyes. Now that the university is a place for fun, it doesn't have to be that dreary, does it? Truth be told, they didn't really like the company of people, but you couldn't run away from them. It's probably why you didn't have that many friends, but it didn't bother you at all. Still, you had a hard time going to university without those goofballs. Maybe you should try encouraging yourself with something sweet. You don't consider yourself a sweet tooth, but it's better to indulge in high blood sugar than something else. You really giggle idiotically to yourself about that dirty joke. It's all the influence of your stupid friends, obviously. You walk into the cafeteria and that's when the school bell rings. But you're not in the mood for lectures today, even if you just slept through them. While you were looking at your feet, someone quickly approached. You didn't even have time to raise your hand as you felt a huge weight on you and heard a hideously squeaky voice that could only be li belong to one person. You bent under the weight of someone else's body and shout something unintelligible, but clearly not in a positive way. Yeah, Fred, get off me! Who? The guy immediately peels away from you with a nasty laugh. You can't help but admit you're glad to see him. <laughs> yeah, sorry. What are you doing here? Did you go down with a hangover yesterday? What? Bull! I'm completely sober, don't you see? You looked at him like a delinquent preschooler caught in a lie. Your thick glasses don't help. I can see the whites of your eyes red, you dummy. Besides, Weren't you puking so hard yesterday you dropped your phone down the toilet while you were talking to me? Fred's face took on a blank expression. He used to scare you, but now you know he's just... Well, that's just who he is. This guy's your neighbor. Sometimes it surprises you because you don't see him 99% of the time. He usually hangs out in your friend's house, on the streets, and even junkyards, but not at home. And he smells like that too. Sometimes you wonder if he even washes. Fred, when was the last freaking time you took a bath? I didn't say anything, and he confessed. It's not a question normal people would have a problem with. You laughed softly. It was a good decision to come here. You don't feel like eating anymore, so you decide to spend your time talking to Fred. Should we go for a walk in the halls? There's nothing to do anyway. I'm always up for it. But don't you have to go for a lecture? He cast a look at Fred that he understands without a word. The guy smiled, and you leave the cafeteria. A moment later, you and Fred are already in the hallways, and oh, what a shame. You can't look at your beautiful face because some girl is walking right in front of you. But look, but that doesn't stop you from enjoying a conversation with an old friend who decided to put his hand on your head. Freak. He was always so tall and took advantage of it. Despite his slender figure, he was really heavy. You wandered the halls and talked about whatever came to mind. He always had something to talk about. You can't help but admit, but you feel much better that you were around your friends. Fred went from one intonation to another, jumping from cute and glorious stories to description of cases when he found all sorts of crap in a variety of conditions. He didn't like constancy, and he was the very embodiment of disorder and changeability. Sometimes he didn't really listen to what he was saying. You just liked his company. You're lucky to know that there are people out there who are crazier than you. We haven't chatted like this in a long time. I'm glad we had this opportunity today. Yeah. You're so sensitive today. Go ahead and give me a kiss on top of that. Mwah, mwah. Fred grimaced and pursed his lips. Ew. You pushed him away with a laugh. Screw you. I'm just a good friend. Besides, don't really want to make out with a garbage can. I don't really smell that bad. Evening came faster than you thought it would. Not that you were keeping track of time, but it was really fast. Yeah, enjoyed skipping your classes. We'll have to do it again. 
You're right. By the way, what are you doing out here? We're expelled during our freshman year. Fred chuckled, and the absent look on his face reappeared. No wonder. Well, forget it. He stretched and breathed in the cool evening air. Well, I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Oh, wait a second. Please. Uh. Nick? What? Is that Nick? Hi, can we help you? The guy was silent. He had forgotten how to talk. Fred stared at him for a while. Then with a smile on his face, he perked up. Ah, Nicky, it's you. You look shabby. Nick didn't even look in his direction. It was strange, but you realized that apparently it was you he was approaching. It's not polite to ignore people like that, you know. Nick was still unresponsive. He seems to be gathering his thoughts. Poor guy. Maybe he was uncomfortable speaking in front of Fred. It was kind of weird. You're okay with it in general. The guy whispered something under his breath. Look at Fred. There was a request in your eyes for Fred to... Uh, go away and leave the two of you alone. Intervene between the two of you and go home together. Go away. Like, let's leave me to the guy who has definitely not killed me several times in other parallel universes. You knew each other well enough to understand intentions by a glance and a slight movement of the head. Fred nodded and looked at his hand as if checking the time on his wristwatch. Wow, it's so late. We should go to Amy's party. Yeah, I'll go early. Bye, Lion. Nick? Nick didn't even try to look in his direction, but he did, so he didn't notice the sneer. The smile on his face twitched and grew even wider. You nodded your thanks to Fred with a smile. The guy waved goodbye and quickly walked away into the darkness of the courtyards. Hey, poor thing. How are you? Aren't you afraid to talk to me anymore? Nick jumped up on the spot. Don't worry. You're trembling so much, even though I'm not threatening you. It's okay. What do you want? Nick adjusted his glasses and seemed to look away. Sorry, I, I get so awkward when I talk to more than one person. Yeah, I noticed that. I just really got my mind so confused as I walked over here. In general, do you mind if I walk you home? He began to think about what he wanted to achieve by this walk. Talk about something, get to know you better. On the whole, you didn't even mind. Nick seems nice and you always want to chat with him, but not enough to make the first move. Your neighborhood is not very prosperous. If something happens. Examine Nick once again. It's a little hard for you to realize that this not so big guy seems to want to protect you. At least the two of us will get beaten up. You're sputtering with quiet laughter. It's more like the truth already. You walk here every night anyway, so maybe it's a sensible idea to go with someone else. Just to be more relaxed. Nick walked beside you. Sometimes nervously touching his glasses and hair. Noticed that he was very tall. Even taller than Fred, but... So because he was hunched over, it wasn't that noticeable. Sometimes the light of lanterns and in a particularly strong gust of wind, he noticed the gleam of his brown eyes. He even got the impression that there was some kind of red glow in them. He was Nick all sorts of things, told him life stories, and he in turn answered quietly and smiled as he listened to you. Hey, what do you have scars on your face? Uh, it's about- no, I'm sorry, I don't want to remind you of that. It's okay, really. It's not really something you need to worry about. Yeah, they showed up after all the abuse. I don't really care. Well, I have a lot of scars. The most unpleasant thing they did was almost blind me. Because of them, I have anisocoria. Now I can see with both eyes almost the same, although blurry. What? I didn't know those guys were capable of such things. Oh, God. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. Thank you for your concern. I really like you a lot. You flinched. That was pretty unexpected. Weird? Is that how- Is that what he wanted to tell you? Your heart raced. Thanks? Oh god. I think it's just affection. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't really fall in love with me at the first sight. Nick flushed. I'm sorry to make you feel uncomfortable. It's just that I'm sure of it. I know for a fact I love you so much. Your breath caught. It's so childish to confess to someone you'd never spoken to. We really found it fascinating. I'm really flattered, but I can't answer you the same way. I'm not sure I can so quickly. Don't worry. I don't expect reciprocal feelings from you. I just feel so much better when I tell you about it. That was sweet. Nick wasn't repulsive, and even despite his unexpected confession, he really didn't feel awkward. Sure, he felt weird, but it was an unusually warm feeling. While you were talking, you didn't notice how you got into your house. 
really didn't want to stop chatting with Nick because you two obviously hit it off, and you were very happy about that. Thanks for the conversation and a walk. Look forward to meeting you tomorrow. If you don't mind. I don't mind at all. Thank you for seeing me off, and oh, I thought you were studying in a different building. No, oh, I just recently transferred. Today was the first day I attended lectures here. As you can see, these guys get me everywhere. Nick yanked on the collar of his bloody shirt and grinned. There's, that's optimism and thirst for knowledge. I could tell a few more stories, but it's cold outside, so I'm gonna go home. No one's waiting for me there, so don't worry about the late hour. Nick rubbed his neck and smiled. He looks so innocent, it's even startling. Hey, if you don't have anywhere to go, you can come over to my place. I'm not expecting anyone to visit, and I have no business. Brett's room is empty, and I don't think he'd mind if he slept over. I think I'm gonna be embarrassed. I'll stay with you for a while, and then I'll call a cab and go home so you can sleep in peace. Is that wings going behind his back? Oh my god. After a bunch of sleepovers, total strangers, I'm really used to it. But thank you very much. You are very caring, really. I'm even embarrassed. We're quite different. Shoot, I'm sorry. Let's get inside already. You and Nick went home. The guy looked around carefully and closed the door behind him. I'm sorry. I don't think I can get you anything. You don't have much food at home. It's okay. I have a special diet anyway. Do you also have stomach problems, or are you just keeping yourself in shape? Yeah. Neither. I guess it could be described as, uh, specific preferences. I'll be sure to tell you about it and let you taste it. That'll be great. You drink coffee. I'll make you a cup. I wouldn't mind. I gotta wash my hands, okay? Yeah, of course. The bathroom is. Before he could finish talking, Nick was gone. He shrugged his shoulders. It's not hard to guess where the bathroom is in this little house. The coffee was already ready and even cold. Did he drown in the toilet? No. Oh. You put your hands on the table and then you lie d down on them to close your eyes. It's not very polite to leave someone like that, but maybe he's trying to wash his shirt now. It's covered in blood after all. Or he's treating his wounds. You have nowhere to go in a hurry and you can just warm up in the coffee. It's fine. Wait, really? As soon as I laid down, someone came? Okay, fine. You open your eyes and already stood up to approach and open to the uninvited guests, but... Something stopped you. The man on the other side of the door would not let up and kept pounding with their hands. But your whole body is stiff. You couldn't even breathe. You tried to turn around, but to no avail. Your heart was pounding at an insane rate. You understood what that feeling was. It was a moment before death. Don't open the door? Okay. No. No, no. There was nausea coming up to your throat. The fear didn't recede. It only ate you up more. The freaking knocking on the door didn't stop. You felt as if that was the sound that would be the cause of your death. Don't open the door. Frick! Nick looked at you dumbfounded. You're finally able to move. Oh, someone here. You flinch when you hear another knock on the door. Hey, let me go home, Lion. Please. Uh, I lost my keys again. Was it Fred? You didn't hear him call you before that. What just happened anyway? You looked at Nick again. He wasn't smiling anymore, to be honest. He looked so upset. What a shame. So we have to take our relationship to the next level sooner than I thought. Too bad. I wanted to be with you. Like this. For as long as possible. What do you mean? Nick took a couple of steps closer to you, and you felt a sharp pain. Your head felt like it was splitting apart. Ah, god damn it! Am I gonna die again? <laughs> ah, frick! Before he fainted, you heard someone's high-pitched scream. Ah. Uh, you started to come around a little bit. You felt a terrible aching pain in the back of your head. I'm thirsty. What happened? Ah. Uh, oh, you're awake. The voice echoed in your mind. You lift your head and throw the red haze in front of your eyes. You could see a figure in front of you. Nick? Is that you? What happened? I whispered all those words slowly, barely moving her tongue. Yeah, it's me. It's just a bad set of circumstances. But it's okay. Open your eyes. I did something for you. It really is, Nick. You felt a little better, but your body was still heavy and your head is aching. How are you? Does it hurt a lot? Everything seems to be fine, but what happened? I can't remember anything. 
Just a freaking knocks on the door. And that scream. Hey, didn't Fred come home? That's right. He came in. I opened the door for him because he fainted. But let's not talk about it. It's all because you're not eating well. You prepared something. Wait, let me tidy up a bit. Is it Fred? That's better. I feel insignificant with these glasses and my hair and ponytail. But you can't cook when your hair is loose. You don't want to get a mess of hair instead of a nice dinner, do you? You blink to uh, you blink to realize what just happened. Well, what are you talking about? We're spread. Why did you call an ambulance if I fainted? Not a lot of questions. Let's eat first. I made such a wonderful steak. I'm an excellent cook. Taste it. You snorted rudely and tried to get out of your chair. But at the same moment, you realized that the heaviness in your body was. What the? Why am I tied up? It's kind of ginky. You tried to see a hint in Nick's face that he was just making a bad joke, but all you could see was irritation. Please, be quiet, okay? I don't feel well because of the noise. You don't feel well? And you think I'm feeling good? Nick covered his eyes and took a deep breath, as if trying not to snap. Please, be quiet and eat with me, okay? After that, I'll be sure to explain everything to you. You exhaled nervously but said nothing back. How do you expect me to eat with my hands tied up? That's good. Thank you, sunshine. Now see, uh... Oh, you're gonna feed me. Ah! Uh, <laughs> you can smell the pleasant smell coming from what Nick was holding out to you. And even obediently open your mouth to eat it, but... Whose meat is that? Nick froze, but didn't take his fork away from your face. He obviously wasn't going to answer that question. You're not allergic to it. Don't worry. It's delicious. Really. Come on. Just eat it. Can I say we're on a date? You look so beautiful, but your face is a little pale. You need to eat. Whose meat is this? He started twitching. He tried to get out of these ropes, but they were tied awfully tight. Don't you understand me? Or are you just mocking me? Let me ask you then. Uh, further to be ungrateful. Sure! I'm not eating that! You scum. I just wanted to please you with great food. I wanted to be a good guy, but no! Is it that hard for you to eat a bite? You couldn't even do it after the way you treated me this morning. Yes, I'm saying this to you! But I'm not offended, because I love you. Don't test my patience. I want to be loving in your sense of it. I want to take care of you, to feed you. Isn't that romantic? Forget about our disagreements. Screw off! Okay, I'll just wait for you to get tired. Screw off? Oh, oh no, this is literally the only choice. Oh no, wait. Wait, how long do I have to go? Oh no, okay, fine. I will eat, I will eat. I hope you enjoy it. You open your mouth and immediately ate a piece of meat of unknown origin. That's which Nick immediately poked a new one. You're so cute when you listen to me. It's times like these that makes me feel like I'm getting to know you a little better. You have no idea how close we're going to be soon. You felt tears coming to your eyes. Is it good, my love? It's delicious. Yum yum. A familiar taste. Oh no. <laughs> okay. What happens if I just eat it? Oh. You're such a sweetheart. I hope you'll enjoy it. You opened your mouth and obediently ate a piece of meat of unknown origin, after which Nick immediately poked a new one. You're so cute when you listen to me. It's times like this that I feel like we're getting closer. I have no idea how close we're going to be soon. I felt tears coming to your eyes. It's a good laugh. It's delicious! Yum yum! Mmm! And that leads to the same ending. Well, okay, this time I guess I'm gonna have Fred come along with us, so hey, let's go. You knew each other well enough to understand intentions by a glance, a slight movement of the head. Hey, Lion, we have to hurry. Otherwise, we won't make it in time for Chloe's arrival. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, but we're in a big hurry to get home. Can we talk tomorrow? Nick turned even more pale. He seemed to say something quietly. Maybe something even like, yeah, of course, but decided not to ask. If it's something important, I'll listen to you. No, it's 
it's not. Nick turned around and quickly left in an unknown direction. He saw the poor guy was going to cry. God, he was so freaking upset. You're such a butthole. What? Am I the butthole? You played me without a second thought. Right now, my conscience is killing me. I will apologize to him tomorrow. Let's go home. You and Fred walked slowly towards home, teasing each other along the way. Talk about things as if he hadn't spoken all day. Phil, I'm tired. Nothing to eat again? Coffee and yogurt. As always. Forgot about that. I'll get us something to eat. I'm still looking for a part-time job. I don't have much money to pay for food delivery. Lord, I'll pay for you. You really think I'll eat while you drool and sip coffee? I'm a good friend. Thanks. I'll give you some money later. For the first time in a month, I'm going to eat normally. Fred rolled his eyes, but he knew he couldn't change your mind and make you not pay him back. Yeah, excuse me for using profanity and not speaking French in your high society. You tapped Fred on the shoulder with a laugh. Ugh, please don't kill me. I'll remember something in French. Je sais à la chouette. Parlez-vous français? Frenzy? I can't speak French! His voice, and it portrayed something, made you laugh with laughter. He turned away and ran to the bathroom, so you wouldn't have to hear his shouting and broken French anymore. <laughs> uh, he shut the door behind you, and began to undress to take a bath. The hot water was always cozy, almost like a bed. But what? <laughs> That's a description! You turn on the faucet, and with your knees to your chest, lean against the wall of the tub. It's cold, and the water hasn't warmed up yet. It's awful. Thoughts of today filled your head, and remembered Nick. Poor thing. I hope he's not offended by me. Why didn't I listen to him at all? Ugh. We'll talk tomorrow, for sure. The shadow appeared behind the bathroom curtain. You chuckled. Fred was either trying to scare you, or he was fooling around again. You weren't embarrassed by his presence, or... Well... He was like a little brother to you, so you weren't afraid to be alone with him. He was naked in the bathtub. Fred, if you open that curtain, I'll kick you out of the house. But for some reason, he didn't move. You felt uncomfortable and pressed your knees harder. Fred? Please say something. You know I'm easily frightened. Don't be such a butthole. We talked about this many times. But he just stood still. You were about to open curtains and look behind it, but your hands were shaking. The thought that it wasn't Fred standing there made you shiver. You better not see who's standing there. Your breath is out of breath. You were so freaking scared. There was nothing at hand that could be your weapon, and you just hoped that this shadow would disappear. You heard a quiet hum that made you flinch. You open your eyes with horror, and no one else was on the other side of the damn curtain. Tears came out of your eyes and felt so miserable. What was that? I'm going to hit him! I'm seriously going to smash his freaking face in! Fear was replaced by anger, and you pulled the curtain open with force. No one was there. You exhaled in relief and began to trust quickly. Fred! <sighs> you froze and stared in horror. At what you saw in front of you. You're finally here. I heard he wanted to bring him to you. And he's heavy, you know? But for your sake, I don't mind. You couldn't realize what was going on. It seemed as if this guy's voice was coming from somewhere far away. It was Fred in his arms. The room reeked of blood. Hey, Fred, where's your head at? Ah! You threw up. It was impossible. No, no, no. Uh, I scream! You clutch your hands to your head and hold out open your mouth to scream. But the same second, in one long jump, Nick was beside you and grabbed you by the throat, roughly pressed against the wall. Don't even think about it. I hate loud noises. So be nice and keep quiet, okay? I assure you, pretty soon, you won't have to hold back your screams anymore. You felt a lack of oxygen, 
Nick licked the knife, and it seemed like his blood from the cut tongue mingled with Fred's. When you remembered Fred's corpse, you involuntarily felt a mad rush of fear that coursed through your entire body. Nick's grip got a little weaker, so he started screaming and calling for help again. Shut your freaking mouth, dear. Is that too much to ask? Don't I deserve to enjoy my last seconds with you? Really after you've screwed me up, I won't even kill you! But no, you will get on my nerves. You have to scream. Do you want it to hurt? Do you want to play with me? Let's play, sweetie. You'll be in so much pain that you'll start begging me to die. Tomorrow, I'll be eating the toughest steak I've ever had. Oh, tough meat. Oh no. God. I'm going to stay silent now, thank you. You clutch your hands to your head and huddle open your mouth to scream, but you couldn't make a single sound. In the same second, in one long jump, Nick was beside you and grabbed you by the throat, roughly pressed against the wall. Don't even think about it. I hate the loud noises. So be nice and keep quiet, okay? I assure you, pretty soon, you won't have to hold back your scream anymore. You shook your whole body even more. You were scared of death after all, but you're even more scared because of that knife in front of you. You nodded and the tears came out of your eyes with renewed vigor. Maybe he wouldn't kill you if you were more obedient. We seem to have found common ground. That's great. So we'll say goodbye on a touching note. We have a good impression of each other. Oh, more precisely, I'm already impressed by you. No, no. I'm already in love with you. Crazy. Madly in love. Isn't that what they call an addiction? I think it is. You know, where you can't live without something. Just as you can't live without air. Nick squeezed his hand around. Nick squeezed his hand harder around your neck. So, I can't live without you. Ah, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Say this to you, looking you in the eyes. It's way too intimate. Nick bit his lip. He really did seem to find his words romantic. Oh my gosh, I want to taste you so bad. For a second, when he heard those words, you start to believe that he was about to let you go, but. Nick didn't unclench his hand. You start to deliberately block your ear. You felt an unbearable pain. Have you really thought about adult fun times? After everything? God, sweetheart. I was being literal. Your lungs felt as if they were on fire. You struggled to scratch and tear at Nick's hand, but there was absolutely no strength left in your body. The main course right in front of me. Oh no. So I rolled back and one of the secret endings, you actually have to go through all the endings. Um, then you have to choose to pick up the necklace, uh, help Nick run home as soon as possible. Then instead of like giving you the prompt to just gather your strength and run away, it will give you the prompt to give up as well. So this is what we're going to do here. It didn't make any sense, whether he killed you now or caught up with you and stabbed you in the back, you would die anyway. You began to choke back tears. The killer finally lifted you off the ground, and just as you were about to be stabbed in stomach with a blade, but they pressed you against them. You could definitely feel the warmth of the human body and clearly hear someone else's heartbeat. The whole thing started to drive you crazy, and you finally fainted. You heard the familiar disgusting sound of the alarm clock. I don't want to open my eyes. You were able to see a room. Was it... Was it just bad dream? You touch your clavicles. There were small, deep cuts already covered by a thin crust. Your hands were shaking. I need to get up. I need to get up! You jumped out of bed abruptly and felt a disgusting weakness in your legs, which immediately caused you to fall to your knees. You could feel yourself starting to choke. Everything in front of your eyes was disgustingly floating. Fear was pervasive. Remember everything you had smelled and heard that day. Memories made you burst into tears of fear. You couldn't stop wheezing and trying to scream. Why are you still alive? What's going to happen to you? 
Who was that? Why did they do this? You tried to put your thoughts in order. It was though you were shaking like a fever. Remember how you were once taught to breathe during a panic attack. You closed your eyes and tried to distract yourself so you wouldn't start sobbing and panting again. Experiencing too much has always been difficult for you. After a few minutes, you could finally think more soberly. But your strength had completely left your body. I can't lie here forever. I have to go to the police. We'll find out what it was. You stroked your shoulders and felt the wounds left by your fingernails. You got up off the floor and examined yourself for handcuffs, ropes, and stuff like that, but obviously, no one had kidnapped you or even tied you up. Then something came to you. This person knew where I live. Before you knew it, you were tearing out of your room as fast as you could. Everything in front of your eyes seemed to lose its contours. As they brought you here, chances are the killer is still in your house. The icy horror made your mind go blank. You almost ran out into the street when someone blocked your way. Out of fright, you screamed and hit the man in front of you as hard as you could. As you were grabbed by the shoulders and stopped where you were. Ah, lion, that hurts. God damn it, Nick. You are totally out of time. Get out of the way. You didn't even try to control your voice and yelled it right in the guy's face. Oh God, lion, I'm sorry. Something happened. You look so scared. In truth, Nick's voice brought you to your senses, and you felt your heartbeat gradually return to normal. You tried to catch your breath again. No, oh, I'm sorry, it's just... God, this totally messed up. Nick gently extended his arms towards you, perhaps to embrace you, but immediately yanked them away. I really can't talk right now. I have to go to the police. Maybe you should just call them? The neighborhood isn't the most favorable. It's already so late. Something might happen to you. You realize that sounds pretty sensible. You're right. Please. Sit with me for a while. I don't want to be alone, at least until the police arrive. Sure, no problem. You and Nick went home. The guy looked around and closed the door behind him. I can't offer much choice in what to eat, to be honest. Can I make you some coffee? Let me do it myself. Will you call the cops? I'll be here. I promise. Yeah, thank you. The phone is somewhere in the room. I'll be right here. You went back to your bedroom and started looking for your cell phone. Uh, but you turned each thing over for a third time. Your patience snapped. So the maniac didn't kill you, but took your phone instead? What a goody goody. You felt somehow cheap. God, why am I doing this? Why didn't I just ask Nick for the phone? I mean, he should definitely have one. Nick was already drinking his coffee and saw the cup with the second one on the table beside him. He took the chilled drink and drank it all in a few big gulps. Can't find my phone. Can I use yours? No, oh, thank you. You're welcome. Tell me what happened so I can tell them everything in detail. But all that hectic day, I went home and these two jerks were waiting for me. They cut off with me and threw me on the ground where... I know. They probably want to intimidate me with a knife. I can still feel the wound they left on my stomach with the blade. But then somebody... Wait, what the hell? Why am I missing out on so many weird things? I looked at Nick, who was waiting for you to continue the story. Continue or open my eyes? What do you mean? Continue? Someone killed them all but me. I have the strange feeling that something is going wrong. It sounds awful. Poor thing. Those freaks scared you so much. Scared me? You didn't seem to hear what I was saying. You felt a little bit dizzy. Someone killed two people right in front of me. Yeah, I heard you. Someone killed the people who want to beat you, who hurt you and frightened you. Should I regret it? It doesn't matter what they wanted to do! Oh crap, it's wrong my head. You squeeze your temples to muffle the throbbing pain that rippled through them. It's such a shame, we have slightly different outlooks on life. I still think that you are beautiful, incredible. You know, it's even so touching that you care about people who deserve to die. What are you talking about? Ugh. I'm gonna throw up. The clutch of your stomach. It was almost impossible to breathe. Everything was spinning. Suddenly, Nick grabbed you and pulled you to him, covering your mouth with his hand. You felt your body cramp up. The warm, sour contents of his stomach poured out of his mouth, which couldn't come out because of the guy's firm grip. 
He started kicking and tried to escape from his grasp, but Nick only squeezed you harder and clamped his hand over your nose, leaving you with nothing but to swallow your own vomit, causing you to start throwing up again. The guy let you go. He fell to the floor and started coughing. Nick knelt down and pulled you gently against him, stroking your head. Don't touch me! Don't come near me! You couldn't resist. Your eyelids were heavy. He must have put something in your coffee. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I overdosed it, but if you vomited it out, I'd have to knock you out by force. I don't want to hurt you. That would be so rude. I only want to love you, darling. I'll be the gentlest. When you wake up, I'll give you something. I promise. Come on. Go to sleep, my love. The guy gently stroked your hair. The only thing you wanted to do was stab him, but despite all your resistance, your consciousness sank into darkness. Okay. It seemed like you've been dreaming. A dark, gloomy dream. No, it's more like a nightmare. No one heard your soul-shattering screams. All you had to do was sob in despair and loneliness and powerlessness. You let out a heavy, sodden sigh. I felt the tears running down your cheeks. Your still numb body was unresponsive, and it could hardly open your eyelids. Darling... Hey, look over here for a while. Come on, you can rest a little more after this. You heard a voice that made you shiver. Your heart raced and your stomach twisted with another wave of fear. You opened your eyes slowly, trying to hold back the tears in your throat. Right in front of you sat Nick, holding out a rather large box wrapped in red decorative paper and tied with black ribbon. You flinched and started coughing rapidly. The stench of dead meat hit you sharply in the nose and stung your eyes. You didn't have the strength to tell Nick everything you were thinking about him. Not even your empty stomach could spit out everything but gastric juice. No, oh, I can see in your eyes that you're not impressed by the smell. Sorry. Ah, I didn't mean to. Just forgot to put them in the fridge. Anyway, I tried for you. Picked out only the best pieces. Your brain wasn't thinking at all. All you could do was shed tears, unable to utter a word. It seems like it's hard for you to talk right now, honey. Let me help you. Uh, oh my god. Another answer? Seriously, you're so heartless? Thank you so much for the gift. You are so wonderful and thoughtful. I'm gonna go with the first one and see where it goes. Yeah, you're embarrassing me. It's the least I can do for you. It was really disgusting to touch those freaks. Though I was in such a hurry that I did have time to clean myself up. Sorry about that. I really won't embarrass you anymore. I have to match you to be as beautiful as you are. But of course, this is impossible. I'll never be able to be equal to you. I love. Ah, look at your present. You shook and immediately felt everything lose its shape. The box was filled to the top with rotten meat and organs that gave off a stench. If you could have screamed, you would have blown your voice. Nick blushed and smiled merrily, barely feeling proud of his gift. Your consciousness has blacked out again. I'm so sorry that you have to have a body. One day I'll hurt you and be the subject of so much of your fear. Nick? Nick? If thought is life and strength and breath, and the want of thought is death, then I am hap I'm a happy fly. I live if I die. From time to time, he would regain consciousness, only for a moment. In the background, there were sounds and soft chanting that you could hardly make out. You never realized how much time had passed, but judging by how much your body was numb, you were in the same position for a long, long time. There was a nasty, sour taste in your mouth. It was hard even to breathe. You only heard some noise in the background. No sign that Nick was in the room. You decided to try to open your eyes and look around. It was useless. There were only blurry spots in front of your eyes. You tried to move your arm, but to no avail. Am I tied up? Again? You whispered it softly, more to see if you could speak at all. Honey, ah, you're awake. To tell you the truth, I was starting to worry that you wouldn't wake up when dinner was ready, but the right on time, as always. So perfect. Cold sweat broke out on your body and your breath caught in horror. You tried to shout, but nothing came out. Leo Wee has escaped from your mouth. Oh yes, sorry for the inconvenience, but I really tied you up. At least so that you don't fall off your chair. I don't want you to hurt yourself. 
Nick gently stroked your cheek. You tried to bite him, but it didn't work. His hand was unimaginably icy. Come on, don't be so naughty. I don't feel pain anyway. Do you want to bite me? Only if you do it out of love for me. Nick exhaled hotly and put his rifts to your mouth, but you just gathered all your strength and spat on his hand. He didn't say anything to that, just grunted and gently wiped your face, but you could feel his fingers trembling with anger. Nothing. I understand. It's all good. He seemed to be saying it to himself. Come on, open your eyes. Look what I have for you. You blinked a few times. In truth, you felt your strength returning to you every minute. Whoa, that looks amazing. The first thing you felt was the unexpectedly wonderful smell of fried meat, which made your mouth fill with saliva. Nick was holding a beautiful piece of meat in his hands, served with potatoes and fragrant herbs. It seemed that this this person was more than good at cooking. What? You dropped my coffee, tied me up, even made me swallow my own vomit, and now you're cooking me food. You want to seem like a nice guy, and then maybe you'll let me go first? Why'd you do this at all? You tried to swallow all the insults that you wanted to shout into his face, but I decided it was better to keep your mouth shut now. But I'm already a good guy. I can see how your eyes are shining in anticipation of when you'll be able to taste this wonderful meat. I'll be even more wonderful when I finally fulfill your wish. In truth, you have no idea how much effort it'll cost me not to eat it ahead of time. God, I'm so good. Such incredible endurance is not given to every person. This dish is not just a piece of meat. This is our division of love. But Musa Chal, only we won't eat a baby. Unlike this meat. Or will we? Nick laughed viciously at his words. You were just... You were just trying to restrain yourself from starting to yell at him. Hey, you know what? I think I don't even mind letting you go. Come on, get up. Move your feet and do whatever you want. You can run away, you can stay. You didn't believe Nick and growled angrily, but he came up to you and slowly untied the rope that chained you to the chair. You no longer tried to find logic in the actions of this madman. Finally, you felt that you could breathe deeply. For now, your body is too weak to escape decided to wait for a little while longer. Ah, if you decide to stay with me. God, I'm on fire. Ooh, so embarrassing. Darling, you know exactly how to make a person happy who is in love with you. Suddenly you shuddered. Pain went through your body. You could not understand the source of this feeling, and you began to frantically look around your body. You finally realized that your legs are so numb that you can't feel them. Oh, something wrong. Nick was smiling, like a child who has been bought a long-awaited toy. I can't feel my legs. Let me get out from behind the table. When I examine them, you don't want anything bad to happen to me, do you? Nick started and hurriedly approached you. Of course, I will never forgive if something happened to you. Nick gently pushed you out from behind the table and... Where are my legs, Nick? Your heart seemed to stop, and a heart-rending scream burst out of your throat. I should take this seriously. <laughs> my legs! My legs! Where are they? I don't have legs! This isn't new to me! God, tell me I'm just dreaming! Frick! You were choking on tears and were hysterical. Nick was standing right in front of you when watching it. Oh, they really hit your psyche so hard. It's just your legs. I will love you absolutely in any way, my dear. I don't care what you look like. But my legs! You didn't hear what Nick was saying. It felt like your eardrums burst from the volume of your scream. You didn't realize how much time had passed, but in the end, your voice was so hoarse that it hurt you to even breathe. There was no spark in your eyes anymore. There was no life in them. They were empty. Nick had already tried to force you to eat meat several times, but... You only screamed and vomited when you thought that this delicious smelling dish is your precious flesh. There was silence in the room. You couldn't scream or cry anymore. You couldn't do anything. Absolutely nothing. This guy was smiling sweetly, as if everything was fine. My love, do you want to taste a piece? Main dish? Oh... This time, I'm gonna go with the alternative answer for this. Let's see if it actually leads to anything different. Another answer? Seriously? 
so heartless. Really. I want to give you a gift that was made by my hands. I was out of breath while I was dragging those two idiots' bodies back to my house away from the dump. I dug through their rotten, filthy corpses. I got dirty in their disgusting blood. I even made a box with my own hands. And you now refuse to simply accept it? My god, I'm in love with a monster! Just a moral freak. That's awful. Do you want to make me cry? Well, good for you! I hope you enjoyed your act to the fullest. Because you're going to die and fall into the same box. And don't worry, I'll keep your cords in my fridge forever. You cried out in pain, and I was stuck in your leg. Nick stabbed you several times, after which he cut the femoral artery. You were choking and crying in pain. No one will find your corpse. He won't leave a single piece of it in the name of love. Oh. I'm ungrateful. Great. I'm just gonna see what happens if I open my eyes instead of continuing on my story. Um, I know I've already gotten, like, enough of the interactions to get the secret ending, but here we go. Open your eyes. What is going on? Why am I acting like I don't have a choice? Why do I make such stupid decisions? Why am I telling you this? Why am I wasting my time when I can tell the police everything myself? Why did I let you into my house at all? Why am I like a freaking robot? Oh, God. Did you realize that just now? It was as if the, his words didn't make any sense. You didn't know what he was talking about, but you didn't know what you were talking about either. You began to shake with the madness that was slowly consuming you. No, wait. I'm the one who's starting to shake. Who are you? Just look at you. So cute. So scared. Paranoid android. Why can't I make decisions anymore? Why is someone controlling me? Hey, be quiet, darling. No one will answer you unless I want them to. Look what I can do. What the frick? Also, wait, hold up. Is, um, is that my character right now or is that me? What the frick? Oh, it's not the nicest place for you. How about the beach? I'm sorry. Wait, wait, what is this ending? Of course. He never misses a chance to make fun of me. He just embarrassed me without the love of my life. Ah, uh, that's enough. I'm not in the mood for jokes anymore. Let's go back to the beginning. Of course not. What the frick? What do you mean, though? Forgive me, my love, but I don't accept that answer. Come on, go back to the beginning. I promise, you'll be fine. Oh, shut up! Oh, it's so annoying. Okay, have it your way. You'll get tired of it someday. Biak! What do you mean, now? Forgive me, my love, but I don't accept that answer. Come on, go back to the beginning. I promise, you'll be fine. What the heck was that? Someone killed them all, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what? Anyway, that was Ron Dinner. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Unfortunately, I cannot show the secret ending here on YouTube because the entirety of it is a bit too intense. And if I were to cut anything out, it would not make sense like, like in the video. If you guys want to check out the secret ending to Ron Dinner, uh, you can check it out over my Patreon link that is in the description below. Either way, I really hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. If you guys want to play it for yourself, link to the game will, of course, also be in the description below. But anyway, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. Um, get yourself a good meal. I am not going to judge you for what you're going to eat. <laughs> Like, that's up to you, fam. I hold no responsibility for this. And I hope you guys have a lovely rest of the day. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.